welcome to your D132 Typography 1 to our first exercise where we'll be working with web typography. So we're going to be designing just a little bit of web type to start. and We'll try to keep it real simple. We'll try to take it real slow because there's a lot involved with it. But we're going to start from Figma and then we're going to go into something called Replit. So there is a video for Replit to see how to create an account and I'll get you started with it. But we are still going to use Figma to actually lay things out. Now I have it laid out so we don't have to lay things out, but we're going to get our information from Figma. So we're going to be going from kind of a prototype where we'll have our typefaces and our sizes and our colors. We're going to have that in Figma so we have an idea of what we want and then we're going to lay it out with code in something called Replit that we use for HTML and CSS. We use it for Python, all kinds of coding kind of stuff, but it's going to be like building a website. And we can do it in a browser and share it with me just like we do with Figma. So what you're going to do first for Unit 9 is you're going to come in here and you're going to click on this link. This is going to be a Figma link, okay? So you're going to go to Figma first and you're not going to do a lot in Figma. And you should still be logged into your account and like some of our other exercises, it'll come up as view only. Now what you want to do is go to this little drop down and duplicate to your draft so it's part of your drafts. And then go to open. And then when it opens, you could go in here and rename it. You could go over here, choose rename, and just replace last F copy with your last name first initial. You could do that. So there it is. I'll hit enter. Now it's part of mine. Now I'm going to zoom into this. I'm just using my fingers on the keypad. But I'm going to zoom into this and basically we have a, a larger frame with a blue background and then this kind of warm color in this box with text. And the idea is it's readable text. We have short line lengths. We have decent line spacing so it's light enough. It doesn't look cramped. We have space between each paragraph, space after, and we have a headline and we have a subheadline. Now I put this in red. You could put this in any color if you want to change it. You could even do it right here. I'll change it to a brown color. I'll use the same color as that and I'll just make it kind of a brown color and I'll go a little more orangey and I'll use a brown color just like we did with Pilsner a little bit. So I'll do something like that. That probably looks better than the red. The red's probably a little too harsh and it doesn't really go with anything. So I'll do that. Go with a kind of deeper brown color. That looks nice. We'll start off by doing that. So that's all I'm doing in Figma. We're not going to do a lot with Figma. We're not going to even share this if we don't have to. But what I want you to do is look at it. We have a box here. So I'm going to click on the box. It's called Rectangle 1 and it has a width of 400 and we're going to set up a similar type of box when we do our code. So it'll be 400 width and it'll even have a 24 pixel margin in here. Now in web, margin is considered outside the box and, and padding is considered inside. So this really has padding in here of 24 pixels. Now we don't have that specified over here, but that's how we're going to set it up. So this box here of text is probably about 352, which if you add 48, 24 pixels, 24 pixels, we'll take it up to 400. So we have the 400 box subtracting 24, 24, and then we would have 24 on the top and bottom, but that's how that works. So then this is actually 352. So we're going to set this up like this. And you can see there's three paragraphs. It's lorem ipsum type. It's just placeholder text. And then we have a subheadline and a headline. Now let's just look at this before we do any web stuff. This body text here is 16 pixels and it's Roboto. Now, Roboto is a Google web font. We're going to use that eventually in our code, but we're going to have to link to it from Google. It's Roboto 16 pixels. If you go down here, there's space between the paragraphs. There's 12 pixels, so there's not quite 16. So there's space, what's considered space after. It could be space before, space after. Now in here, it's probably using something like padding bottom, padding bottom on these paragraphs. But we could use spacing in here. So just be aware that there's 12 pixels in between. You just want to be careful if you're using padding bottom on everything, you don't want to have extra padding on the bottom. So that's something we just have to be aware of here. We may want to put it on the top and have this be the padding top here. And again, 16 pixels. And what's the line spacing? We, we know that the width is 352. What's the line spacing? And if we go down here, it says auto. Now, what the hell's auto? I don't know what auto means. It doesn't mean 100%. Well, I don't know. Let's click on this box and let's see. If we go to auto and I type in 100%, make sure you put in the percent. It actually looks pretty crowded now at 100%. So we don't want it 100%. That means it's 16 over 16 line spacing. If it was point size, it would be 16 over 16. That's pretty tight. We don't want that. We want it probably around 120%. Now, if I go back here and put this 100% at 120% and make sure you don't put 2% signs in here, and I'll hit enter, 
that looks about how it was. Matter of fact, if I double click in here and I highlight over all of this and I put auto, it shouldn't change. So our auto is about 120%. So it has about 20% more than the size. So if the size is 16, it's adding about 20% to that. So just be aware of that. And that's pretty typical for line spacing for letting is having 20% more. That gives some nice lightness into it. So we have 20%. 120% is what we have. It makes it nice and lighter. Can you do more? Sure you can. You could go more here and you could do it 140 if you want. Make sure you put in percent. You could. We could do that on our page. We're not going to do that now, but we'll start with 120 and leave it like that. So that's our body copy. Then we have a headline and it says 24. That's actually one and a half times 16. And it's also in Roboto, but this time it's bold. So it's about one and a half times that. So we just want to be aware of that. It's 24 pixels and it's in that kind of brownish color. And then we have a headline, it's in a different typeface. This is Crimson Pro, and this is 36, which is about two and a quarter times. Sometimes you'll use double the size, but with a serif font and a sans serif body copy, sometimes it doesn't look quite big enough, so this is around two and a quarter size, so it's around 36. So we go double it to 32, and then add four, which is a quarter of that. So that's around two and a quarter of that. And again, we have margin around here. We have a, a cool blue background. We have a warmer foreground to bring our eyes in. We have a nice short line length. And that's how we're going to read stuff. Now, this isn't a web page, but it's showing some information. And I want to start simple here because we're going to be writing code and doing all kinds of things. And I don't want to throw a whole bunch of stuff at you right now. So that's all we have to be aware of right now. You can keep this open. So just leave this open. We could go back and look at it. Now, what we're going to do after watching the video on Replit, and how to create an account, we're going to make a new what's called a repel. And we're going to build this in there. And you don't have to copy and paste anything because we do have a way to put in this kind of placeholder text. And one thing I just want to point out, and this is like one, two, three, this is like 15 words. This is like 20 words. And this is like 30 words. We could kind of stick to that because we could build that in Replit. So let's go to Replit. I'm going to go here and type in Replit. And you should have created an account and you should be logged in. And I'm going to go to somewhere called My Repels. You may have a bunch there from other classes. You may not have anything here. You probably don't have a picture here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new repel. So I'm going to go here and where you see a button, you can actually go here or you could go here and do Create Repel. And by the way, before I even do anything, let me just close this up. Before I do anything, if you go down here and it looks like, it looks like that and you want it dark, just go down here and click on where it says the little palette thing and then go to dark so i like it dark when i'm doing web stuff when i'm doing regular pages i like it lighter so that's down here that's on this regular hamburger menu over here and that comes and goes over there this is your account stuff here where you could log out but this is your hamburger menu those three lines over there so i have it in dark mode right now and that's all i have to do and i'm going to create a repel if you don't see a create repel or create new over here, when you're in here, you can just go here to this and add a plus. Now, and the reason that went away, because I went to my repels, if you go home, then this create repel shows up here. So if you go to home, create repel, if you go to my repels, oh, that's back again. That went away for, I guess, because I had that this thing up here. Maybe I just wasn't scrolled up there enough. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, I guess it, I guess I was just kind of scrolled up like that and I wasn't seeing it. So just scroll up <laughs> and see create repel. Sorry about that. So I'm going to create a repel whether you do it from home or whether you do it from my repels. So I'll create repel. Now what does this mean? What's all this stuff? Python, all kinds of stuff. I'm going to look for HTML and if you don't see it just start typing HTML and we're going to use this HTML, CSS, JS for JavaScript. So I'm going to click on that and that's the template. And then over here, give it a name. I'm just going to call it 12 web type. You can put it all together and dash. We'll use dashes instead of underscores web type. And I'm just going to put my last name first initial, unless you want to just put your initials and then hit create repel. And here we are. Now, a couple things just to point out, just to get you started is you're going to see three files index html script.js and style.css we're not going to use javascript right now so you could go right over to this right away and just get rid of it and hit delete so i went on these three dots here right here and i went delete and yes i want to delete it and keep in mind this thing you could close the sidebar if you ever lose it you could go back and if you ever lose any of these things like you you close this for whatever reason you're like where the hell did it go uh, you can go here and just click on this and it'll open it up again. 
and you can move it over here if you want it over there and you could close these things and add a new one for shell or console or whatever or when you go here new tab and I'll web view it's called so I'll go to web view and now they're in the same pane and again I'm just showing this just in case you get messed up uh, they're in the same pane right now you could go here and just say add pane and insert right and this is where you're gonna do web view and this is the way it shows up when you first see it so I'm just messing things around in case you close things up but you don't have to so again when you come in here it'll look like this so this is what it'll look like I was just showing you what happened so in case you get screwed up in case you lose anything like that and you're like Where, where's that other pane that thing's called a pane over there so you can add a pane and say insert right and it's web view web view is the preview of your code and this is your code right here that you could just click on. So I just want to point that out, uh, you know, just so you don't get messed up. Now, when you preview this over here, you hit run. Now, we're not going to view it right here. What you're actually going to do is go to this little button here and open it in a new tab and just click on it. And then it'll show up up here. And then we're going to go back and forth. We'll preview our, what we're working on, and then we'll go back here. Now, that means you don't really need to see this here. So you could actually, you know, for that matter, you could close this and just work on our code like this. So you can do that if you want. You could even slide it over if you want, or you could close that. And again, if you ever want it back, just go here, add pane, insert right, and then put whatever you want over there. Console, whatever, web view if you want. Again, you could slide it over if you want, and then it'll just kind of go away over there. But this is where you're gonna pre preview everything. And when you preview it, you're gonna hit refresh. Now, we don't need this here. We're gonna get everything out of body. So a couple things, we'll talk about this, but before you even get started here, there's preferences in here that you can set up. And let me just go see where they are because they kind of change these around. And they're under tools, they're settings. And all I want you to do for settings when you go in here, I may have gone over here. Oh, here they are. <laughs> I slid them over here. Uh, that's where your settings are showing up, over here. And it's saying font size large. Now I'm doing large because I'm recording a video. Uh, indent type tabs, I use that for programming. Indent size 4, I use that for programming. And wrapping soft wrap, I recommend you have those. So if it says none, change it to soft wrap so nothing gets cut off. So soft wrap for wrapping. Indent size, if it said whatever, 2, change it to 4. And indent type, instead of spaces, use tabs. And font size, you could leave it whatever you want. I have it on large because I'm recording a video. And then I could just move this over again. You could even have it peeking through if you want to make sure you don't lose it. I don't really need settings right now again. So again, I could close settings here and then there's my web view again. All right, so back to here. You can see we're going to take it slow. We haven't done anything yet. You know, we haven't done anything like that. <laughs> so we're back here now. Now, some of this code we're going to get rid of. This hello world, everything inside a body, we're going to wipe out. And what I mean by inside a body is here's where body starts. There's a starting tag. They have a less than and a greater than sign. And this is the closing body tag. And if you have them paired up, you should click on one and see the closing one. The closing one will typically have a forward slash. So that's your opening closing body tag. And typically anything that's visual on the page, you'll see inside there. Now, right now, the only thing is hello world, and we're going to wipe it out. I'm going to wipe out all that stuff. And when you go here to refresh it, there should be nothing there. So it's just a white background. And we're going to change all that. So we basically have HTML opening and closing. Let's look at the whole thing. We have a doc type, which tells us which kind of document it is, which is HTML5. Doc type, which is the most current. And it just has an opening tag. There's no closing doc type HTML. Then there's HTML, which has an opening and closing. And everything should be inside there. There's a head tag that has meta character set. It has meta name. It has a title. It has a link. And it's all stuff you don't see except for the title up here. That's the title. That thing where it says replit. And we could change that. You can't change it up here, but you could go here and just put 12 web type and you can put your last name. That way you'll see it up there if you want. So that's your title up there. So we could change that. Now this, you don't have to worry about the character set or the meta name right now. Style.css, that's a link. And what it's doing, it's linking to this file. And we're not even using that yet, but we will. That's where we're going to do all our designing and all our web type editing is going to be in here. All our layout's going to be there. So designing will take place in here. This is just structure. So index.html is just structure. And then we're going to format it. It's just like, it's kind of like in here, all the stuff we do over here, that's all our formatting, except we're kind of using menus and putting in numbers and all that. We're going to do it through code. 
So we're going to do it through code in the style.css. Now there's already something there. Uh, you could leave that there for now because I think we're going to edit our HTML. Actually, wipe it out. We don't need anything in there. So nothing in there to start, but it is linked to there. So it's called style.css, and this is called style.css. That means it's going to use that file when it starts to design the page. Now let's put some content in here, and then we'll take a break, and then start styling in part two. But we're going to put some content in here. Now what kind of content are we putting in here? We're going to put this is a headline, this is a subheadline, and we're going to put three paragraphs. That's it. Should be easy. And even before we do that, we're going to make a box that's kind of a container. So we'll make that container first. So let's do that. Let's make a container and a container in HTML is called a div. It's kind of a generic kind of container. Then you could style it, do anything you want with it. You could give it a, you know, a kind of a beigey background color, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to just create our structure right now. So inside a body, I'm just going to hit return. So I'm going to go right, right here and I'll hit return and it should be indented almost like a tab. And then what I'll do is I'll just type div div you don't have to make all these tags because we have shortcuts you could just type div and then hit your tab key watch this tab and then hit enter and that means there's your opening div and your closing div and you want to kind of hit return so that you can see what is inside of what because what you're going to do up here with div well actually we can leave div alone right now but what you're going to put inside here inside this div which is a container which you will not see on the page there's nothing you'll see here you won't see any div on the page what you'll see here is we're going to put an h1 and we'll do it the same way i'm going to put h1 and then i'll hit my tab key that's a shortcut that writes code for you look at that and then i'm going to put whatever it says here this is a headline <laughs> hopefully you should remember that this is a headline and you can put a capital h if you want because it's a headline and you can put an exclamation point if you want that's it this is a headline and now you hit refresh there it is this is a headline now how big is that well it's an h1 which means it's the largest heading size this h1 means it's the largest heading size so it goes by a structure and that's the largest heading size and if i went here and i right clicked and i did inspect i'll see that it says uh 2m you might have the, uh, something else down here but it says 2m that means it, basically what that means it's about double default so if my default body size is 16 it means this is probably 32 and I think that's what it is because it goes by 16 being the base font size or the base typeface size so this would be double that so 2m it's kind of like 200% is kind of what that means that's all you need to know right now and then I'm gonna put in h2 so right after this I'll hit return I'll type h2 and hit my tab key because then it'll make my opening and closing h2 tags this is where the subheadline is gonna be and I'll just put this is the subheadline type it without caps and i'll just put some dots there like an ellipsis something like that and there's a subheadline now if i go here and refresh it you can see it's smaller how big is it well let's see inspect it's saying 1.5 so that's one and a half so it's 16 and 8 so that's 24 pixels that's about what that is by default keep in mind everything is default right now we're not doing anything so that's the default h1 default h2 it's making it bold it's using times new roman it's making it left justified and in the upper corner so all that which we're going to change and it's even putting space in between them which we're going to change and everything else will change too so we're going to change everything so that it looks more like this we won't even use the same typefaces so now we're going to put three paragraphs in and this will be fun because it's called lorem ipsum and sometimes we would copy it from other websites but actually with that little shortcut we could put it in here so right after the h2 i'm going to put a p and then i'm going to put a little greater than sign and then i'm going to type lorem and you should see this show up it should show up in green here i'm going to type lorem and then i'm going to put 15. that means there's going to be 15 words then i'm going to hit tab so p arrow lorem and don't do a space or whatever and then hit tab because then it won't work you might have to start over so if anything doesn't work start over and put p greater than sign lorem 15 and then you know don't go get something to drink or whatever and then come back just hit tab and there it is so there's my paragraph now it will wrap over here so even though this stuff is indented it will wrap over here and then i'm going to hit return again and i'm going to make another one and i'll put p greater than sign lorem and i'll put 20 and i'll hit tab and there's my second paragraph there's 20 words in there 
and then I'll make one more paragraph. I'll hit enter after that last P. And remember, you want an opening P, which is a paragraph, and a closing P. Opening P, closing P, that's one paragraph. Opening P, closing P, that's another paragraph. Now right here, I'm going to type P, make another paragraph, greater than sign, lorem. Now obviously if you're typing stuff, you wouldn't put lorem, but we're just putting placeholder stuff. Lorem, and I'll put 30. So this will be a longer paragraph, and I'll hit tab. And now if I refresh it, that's what it looks like. Now that doesn't look anything like this, what we're going to do here. So we're going to style that so it looks like that, but we have our content. So this is our content in here. We have a div, which is basically going to be this, this box, our rectangle one. It's going to be a div. And it'll be this color, and it'll be 400 width, and we'll actually put padding in it of 24 pixels. And then we're going to adjust our headline. So it's maybe 2 and a quarter, not just 2M, but 2.25. And we'll put it in Crimson Pro. We'll put this in Roboto. We'll put this in Roboto. We could start off at real kind of generic fonts first, but then we could use Roboto and Crimson once we get them from Google. So this is all we need to start. That's what we have. Now, if you want to do one little bit of CSS, because that's what we're going to be doing next, we're going to do this. You're going to go into style.css. Let me just do body first. I'm going to do body and do a space, and that's targeting my body tag. So I'm targeting body, everything in body, and I'm going to go back here to style.css, and I'm going to put a curly brace, and when I do one, it does two, I'll hit enter, so it looks like that. That's the way it should look. It should say body, opening curly brace, and the bottom curly brace should be over here, and then indented here. You don't have to have it indented, but it looks better. I'm going to put background. I'm going to start typing background and when you start typing it should come up background and it'll make a colon and then it'll finish off with a semicolon so it has to be a colon this means this is the property and then your value is going to go here now you could just put like light blue if you want you could start typing put light blue and then go here and refresh it and there it is it's light blue now if you want the same color that's over here you could go here on this frame and you can see it's C7EBFF. You could even copy that if you want. I'll copy that. And go here and copy it and paste it right here, right over light blue. Now, it doesn't do anything right now. If I refresh it, nothing happens because I need a pound sign because that's a hex color. That's basically RGB, but it's using it in six digits like that. So that's a hex color. So I could have done this. I could have just put light blue and refreshed it. And if you thought, that's too dark, then you can go here and you could click on this and you can kind of move it up here and just lighten it yourself. That'll work too. But we're just trying to get it close to the other one. So we're just making it a little lighter. So I'll just hit enter. And now it's doing a hex color. And I'll go back here, I'll refresh this. That's probably a little more like that. And that's all I need right now. So I have my background color and that looks okay, except we don't have everything else and I'll do one other thing right now and then we'll take a break we're gonna go here and this is where we're gonna use this asterisk and that means everything so we're gonna put this asterisk here it's a wild card and I'm gonna put an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace and then I'm gonna put margin and click on margin and it should get a colon and then a semicolon um, I'll put zero and then I'll hit return and I'll put a second property here and now this thing is a declaration block, just so you know. This is a declaration block for body. This is a declaration block for wildcard for the asterisk. And I'll put padding, because what we're doing is wiping out the default spacing right now. And when you do that, once I put margin zero, and you don't have to put pixels here when you use zero. You can just put zero. So this declaration block is wiping out the padding, and it should not look good see it, it took out any margin it put things to the edge and we're gonna fix that because we're gonna style that ourselves so we don't want any formatting there to be mixed up with the stuff that we add so we're gonna format it ourselves like this so we're gonna be doing that in part two so we'll be doing everything in our styles.css we don't have much to do here anymore we have our content that's all we need and this thing is linked to our styles.css. So every time we go here, we'll make changes and we'll just update it. So we're gonna color our div, we're gonna center it, we're gonna change our fonts. This may take three videos because we are gonna eventually use Google fonts instead of just using system fonts like Times and Arial and stuff like that. But we might start off with Arial. 
but eventually we'll do that. So we'll do a little more formatting in part two.